Welcome to our Lent Reflection on Wednesday the 31st of March. My name is Sarah O'Donoghue and I was one of the first cohort of eight to study at the college between 2013 and 2015. It was also a privilege and a blessing to be the first person deaconed and then priested uh, at the college. I'm now a vicar at Christchurch Orton in Lancashire, which is one of the largest churches in the Diocese of Liverpool. And so our reading today comes from Luke's Gospel, chapter 22, beginning at verse 54 and ending at 71. Peter disowns Jesus. Then seizing him, they led him and took him into the house of the high priest. Peter followed at a distance. And when some there had kindled a fire in the middle of the courtyard and had sat down together, Peter sat down with them. A servant girl saw him seated there in the firelight. She looked closely at him and said, This man was with him. But he denied it. Woman, I don't know him, he said. A little later, someone else saw him and said, You are one of them. Man, I am not, Peter replied. About an hour later, another asserted, Certainly this fellow was with him, for he is a Galilean. Peter replied, Man, I don't know what you're talking about. Just as he was speaking, the rooster crowed. The Lord turned and looked straight at Peter. Then Peter remembered the word the Lord had spoken to him. Before the rooster crows today, you will disown me three times. And he went outside and wept bitterly. The men who were guarding Jesus began mocking and beating him. They blindfolded him and demanded, prophesy who hit you. And they said many other insulting things to him. At daybreak, the council of the elders of the people, both the chief priests and the teachers of the law, met together. And Jesus was led before them. If you are the Messiah, they said, tell us. Jesus answered, if I tell you, you will not believe me. And if I asked you, you would not answer. But from now on, the Son of Man will be seated at the right hand of the Almighty God. They all asked, Are you then the Son of God? He replied, You say that I am. Then they said, Why do we need any more testimony? We have heard it from his own lips. When I was younger, one Christmas, I asked for my parents to buy me the vinyl record of Michael Jackson's Bad. And one of the songs that I repeated over and over again was Man in the Mirror. The lyrics, I'm starting with the man in the mirror. I'm asking him to change his ways. No message could have been any clearer. If you want to make the world a better place, just take a look at yourself and make a change. You may be wondering why I chose to start with the lyrics of that song. Well, I think the season of Lent is all about examining our inner selves, ourselves and our relationship with God. In a way, it's like taking a mirror to our lives and asking God to reveal and show to us the obstacles and the blockages that prevent us from knowing his love and the deepness of that relationship that we can have with him. French theologian John Calvin said this, knowing yourself begins by knowing God. Jesus knew Peter uh, better than Peter even knew himself. Earlier on in this passage, we hear uh, Peter confidently saying to Jesus, I will never deny you. I will always love you, Lord. I will always follow you. And Jesus saying in verse 34 that, Peter, you will deny me three times. Jesus knew Peter better than Peter knew himself. And he also knows our weaknesses and frailties better than we know ourselves. Peter's denial uh, in this passage causes him to look at himself in the mirror and what he sees, he doesn't like. And at his own denial of Jesus, Peter weeps bitterly. And what is Jesus's reaction to Peter? He turns and simply looks at him. I don't think he looks at him in a way of judgment, but one of compassion. And we know later on 
in other gospel passages, particularly in John's gospel in chapters 20 and 21, that Jesus gives another opportunity for Peter to encounter his love. Firstly, on Easter Sunday, as Peter goes to the tomb. And secondly, as Jesus cooks breakfast for the disciples and reinstates Peter as the rock on which he will build his church, asking him, do you love me? What hope for us all that when we are messing up, when we fail, maybe time and time again, that there is a place for us in God's kingdom, that his love stretches out to us and encourages us just to be who we are. No matter what we've done, no matter what uh, problems we may have had, that we can be fully accepted into God's kingdom of love. I know many of us during the pandemic, like myself, have been on Zoom online church. And in a way, that's a little bit like ourselves looking at the mirror, except for myself and maybe others. It just uh, magnifies the grey hairs and the bags under your eyes. But it also maybe shows our brokenness and our weaknesses and our frailties. And the good news is that Jesus has already called us. He knows all of those things about us. So as I draw this reflection to a close, I wonder if there's two things we can take from today's reflection. First of all, as leaders, knowing that when times are tough, that we simply can't do it in our own strength, but in the strength that Christ who calls us and that Christ who calls us will bring all things to completion. And then secondly, to quote again, the man in the mirror lyrics. Maybe when we've encountered somebody who is deeply scarred or maybe when we're trying to minister to a broken heart or to people who have had washed out dreams to remind them that nobody is too broken for Jesus, that he accepts everybody just the way they are. And to encourage people that a life knowing Jesus is so much better than a life without him and that Jesus looks on each and every one of us with compassion, accepting us just the way we are. So shall we pray? Heavenly Father, give us courage to look at ourselves so that knowing ourselves, we may know you all the more.